Karnataka state presently was scattered that is spread irregularly among many regions ruled by kings before integration that is before having unity among all the regions as one state during the 18th century british not only achieved their political supremacy but also used people heavily to work in trade and agriculture land as per their plan so along with people even the local kings was afraid of insecurities in karnataka this made rebellions that is the freedom fighters soldiers and group of people to turn against the british in karnataka in the beginning even the kings and zamindars opposed the british individually without forming a group or unity but when hyder ali and his son tippu sultan started a strong opposition against the british using the power of their mysore kingdom opposition against british rule became even stronger from 1761 to 1799 huge political developments took place in karnataka The 18th century was called the century of political problems in the Indian history. Along with many other reasons, two major kings death made the Karnataka rulers weak. Firstly, the Mysore king Chikkadevaraja Odayar died in 1704, which created problems of who would be the next king and made the political system weak in Mysore. Secondly the Mughal emperor Aurangzeb died in 1707 This made the Mughal empire weak and slowly Mughals lost their political control over South India including Carnatic regions During such a critical stage Hyder Ali an ordinary soldier became the commander in chief in Mysore army during the attack of devanhalli and military action against nizam of orkot and very soon became the nawab with the love of his soldiers and people an ordinary soldier with his creative sword usage and swift movements became stronger than the military commander in chiefs called dalavai and even krishna rajwadiyar with his intelligence and leadership skills he took control of the administration of mysore On one side when there was a fight among Nawab of Orkut Marathas and Nizam of Hyderabad for power the other side British and French were trying to occupy these places for their benefit Hyder Ali and his son Tippu Sultan played a major role in trying to defeat the British than any other rulers during the 18th century They changed their traditional weapons to modern weapons to fight strongly with the British. The soldiers of the Mysore army were trained like European armies. Hyder Ali and Tipu Sultan were the first to use rockets in the war. When many nawabs became bankrupt by losing all their treasury after fighting against the British, they helped them by making many agreements and trade plans to strengthen their economic system. they also nationalized tobacco and sandalwood that is they changed private trade of these products to be traded under government control they improved the quality of traditional artifacts of mysore with the help of french experts to compete in the international market artifacts are the historical things created by people Now let us see how Anglo Mysore wars took place during the rule of Hyder Ali and Tipu Sultan. Hyder Ali became so powerful in the south which angered his enemies like British, Marathas and Nizam of Hyderabad. So the British planned to defeat Hyder Ali who was well known for his political tricks and intelligence. When Hyder Ali was trying to get the support of Marathas and Nizam of Hyderabad at the same time British quickly entered into an agreement with Marathas and the Nizam of Hyderabad against Hyder Ali which resulted in a tri-party alliance However Hyder Ali with his intelligence created fights and misunderstandings between this alliance by forming a strong strategy so slowly political fight started in orkut 
Now, Hyderali and Nizam of Hyderabad together attacked Orkut, where the Orkut king still had the alliance with the British. This mainly gave birth to the First Anglo Mysore War. This war took place in Tiruchinapalli, Tiruvannamalai, Ambur, and other places. When the British army from even Bombay joined the war, Hyderali suffered as the British captured few places. Hyderali took this war as a challenge and continued the war bravely. His army reached Madras by 1769 during the war, which frightened the British, and finally, with no other option, British signed into an agreement called Madras Treaty with Hyderali, which ended the First Anglo Mysore War. <laughs> Second Anglo-Mysore War started mainly because of weak politics in the places called Travancore and Tanjavur. Due to the Madras Treaty between Hyderali and British, there were no much political growth in South India for some time. When Madhav Rao attacked Sri Rangapatna with the Maratha army, Hyderali was expecting British support as per the Madras Treaty. But the British cheated Hyderali without following the Madras Treaty and refused to support him. A place called Mahe, which belongs to the French colony, was controlled by Hyderali. The British attacked and captured Mahe. All these incidents finally led to the Second Anglo Mysore War. At the beginning of the war, Hyderali fought well and captured many forts in Karnataka and captured even Kanchipuram. So the Mysore army led by Hyderali reached till Coromandel Beach which feared the British officers. Later Hyderali attacked even Orkut and captured it. When Hyderali was about to attack Vandivash and Vellore, the standby British army who were kept for emergency purposes led by Sir Ayer Coote, secretly followed the Hyderali army until Pondicherry. After knowing this, Hyderali asked for French support, but French did not support him. Immediately, Hyderali changed his war strategy and started to attack British-controlled regions. Finally, his strategy worked and captured a large booty of arms and wealth that is, stolen valuable things like weapons, gold, and money from the British regions. Later, during the Battle of Port Nova, Hyderali was defeated by the British. Though this changed the direction of the battle, increasing the British confidence, the British suffered financially during the war in Pulikat and Sulungur. So, British entered into Salbai Agreement with Marathas and Nizam of Hyderabad and finally gained their support by forming an alliance. When Hyderali died due to illness, using this situation, the British tried to occupy Mangalore and Bidnur. When Hyderali's son Tipu Sultan led the war and continued the war in the Malabar region, British took the support of Malabar and Calicut rulers and influenced them to fight against Tipu Sultan. Expecting such tricks by British, Tipu Sultan protected Mangalore and coastal regions and defeated the British. Finally, with an agreement called Treaty of Mangalore between British East India Company and Tipu Sultan, the Second Anglo-Mysore War ended in 1784. After his father's death, Tipu Sultan became the ruler of Mysore. He very well knew the strategies and tricky policies of the British. So Tipu Sultan, realizing the danger from the British, decided to drive them out of India. Throughout his 17 years of rule, he carried out many wars against the British. He identified all British enemies and formed a group. He very well knew that if he hurts the British business, their political strength would weaken in India. This way, he tried to break the monopoly of the British in Indian trade. For example, if there is only one shoe shop in the entire village with no other shoe shop to compete with them, 
In this case, even if the prices are high, people will buy from them as his shop has more demand and people have no other choice to choose the shop. This kind of seller with more demand and no much competition is called a monopoly. So all these reasons angered British and led to high enmity against Tipu Sultan. The political condition of Travancore mainly led to the Third Anglo-Mysore War. During Second Anglo-Mysore War, Tipu Sultan had imprisoned few British soldiers. As per the Manglu Treaty between Tipu Sultan and the British, British asked Tipu to free the British soldiers, but Tipu refused. This made British angry and supported Travancore King to build a fort in Kochi. So this Travancore king later captured Ayakota and Kanganur forts from the Dutch. The British captured Karwar, Coimbatore, Dindigul and other regions under the leadership of Sir William Meadows. Tipu Sultan entered Baramahal region and captured the place called Satyamangalam. However, he failed to capture Tiruchinapalli. Now under the leadership of Lord Cornwallis, British captured Kolar and Huskote. The destroyed fort in Bangalore and finally occupied Bangalore. On top of this, the entire war direction changed when Lord Cornwallis started leading the British army and took the support of Marathas and Nizam of Hyderabad. The army of Marathas captured Savanur, Gajendragad, Lakshmeshwara, Hubbali and other places. These combined armies later continued towards Sri Rangapatnam and occupied many forts in 1792. Seeing all this, Tipu Sultan finding no other way, signed in an agreement called Treaty of Sri Rangapatnam and ended the Third Anglo-Mysore War. After this, British created many conditions to weaken Tipu Sultan. According to the treaty, Tipu was forced to hand over half of his kingdom to the British. Along with this, Tipu paid a fine of 3 crore rupees for causing damages during war and pledged his two children as a guarantee against the payment. Tipu was also forced to release the British prisoners under his custody. Later, the British came out of the combined army from Sri Rangapatna. After some time, Tipu Sultan paid 3 crore rupees fine and got his children released from the British. He also gave away few regions as per Treaty of Sri Rangapatnam. Tipu took the defeat of the Third Anglo-Maratha War personally. When Tipu asked British to give away Malbar regions and argued his rights on those regions which were under British control, British refused his argument. So when Lord Wellesley became the Governor General of India in 1798, he started political strategies to weaken Tipu Sultan. Knowing this, Tipu sent an ambassador to France and the local rulers to form an alliance to get their support. This angered Lord Wellesley as this would damage the British rule in India. So Lord Wellesley forced Tipu Sultan to sign one more treaty where he must give most of his power. Tipu Sultan rejected to sign this treaty which finally led to 4th Anglo-Mysore War in 1799. During the war, British destroyed a strong fort. Tipu died in the battle fighting the British in 1799. Finally, Tipu Sultan could not fulfill the dreams of his father to drive the British out of India. His death made British stronger and started to rule entire India. During Tipu's rule, most of the regions were shared among British, Marathas and Nizam of Hyderabad. So as per the agreement, a small region was handed over to the royal rulers of Mysore Vadeyars. Therefore, this region became the princely state of Mysore. <laughs> Thank you.
After the death of Tipu Sultan, many soldiers and people opposing the British rule protested the British. These armed rebellions in 19th century were led by a brave rebellion called Dondia Vag, who was born in a Maratha family of Chennagiri and he was called Vag, which means tiger for his bravery. In the beginning, he was a soldier in Hyderali's army and later became the military general. He fought supporting Tipu Sultan by building his own private army. But due to the difference of opinions between Tipu and Dondia Wog, he was imprisoned by Tipu Sultan and later British released him after the Fourth Anglo-Mysore War. After coming back, he built a small army including unhappy soldiers from Tipu Sultan's army and some rulers who lost their power due to the British. With these combined armies, he captured Bidinur and Shivamogga forts but failed while trying to capture Chitradurga fort. Knowing all this, Lord Wellesley planned an attack on Shivamogga, Honnalli, Harihara and other places under the control of Dondia. Dondia lost all these regions. After losing even Shikaripura region, Dondia ran away near Gutti, which was mainly controlled by the Nizam of Hyderabad. Very soon, when Nizam's army attacked Gutti, again Dondia ran towards Maratha region, where he was finally captured along with his horses, camels and arms. Even after this, Dondia was brave and continued his war against the British. Many unhappy Palegars also started supporting Dondia. Palegars are the military governors selected by mainly Vijayanagara Empire, Madurai Nayakas and the Kakatiya dynasty. Along with Palegars, later French also started to support Dondia. But British who were following Dondia in many places like Harihara, Chitradurga, Shikaripura, Savanuru, Rani Banur and Kittor took over Shirhati region and killed many followers of Dondia Wog. Dondia captured Shikaripura fort back from the British. Seeing these developments, Lord Wellesley planned an attack from all the directions against Dondia army near Tungabhadra and Malaprabha. Finally, when Dondia left Raichur, he was caught by Marathas and Nizam's army and finally British attacked and killed him at Kunigal. After the death of their leader, Dondia's followers divided and scattered. British finally captured large amount of arms which are weapons and ammunitions like bullets and shells from Dondia. Kittur is located between Dharwad and Belgaum and Rani Chennamma was the queen of Kittur. After the death of her husband Raja Mallasarja in 1824, her son Shivalinga Rudrasarja became the ruler of Kittur and Rani Chennamma took care of all the administrative matters of Kittur. But very soon when her son Shivalinga Rudrasarja had health issues and died, Rani Chennamma adopted a boy called Shivalingappa and made him the ruler of Kittur. After defeating the Marathas, Tipu Sultan and his father Hyder Ali, British became more stronger and made a tricky policy. Let us see in detail about this policy. Dalhousie, the Governor General of British, arrived to India in 1848. He tried to join Indian states ruled by Indian kings with the British Empire. He followed doctrine of lapse policy. According to this policy, if the king dies without having any son or had adopted a son, then that state was added to the British territories. Adopted son of any king was not allowed to rule the kingdom and such adopted son was eligible to receive only pensions. 
So British applied this policy to Kittur and sent a collector and a political agent of British named St. John Thackeray to occupy jewels and treasures of Kittur. This angered Rani Chennamma and had no other way and declared the war against the British. During the first round of the war, St. John Thackeray was killed by the military officer of Kittur called Amatur Balappa and many British officers were taken as prisoners. But during the second round of the war, under the leadership of British officer Colonel Deke, British defeated Rani Chennamma and was imprisoned at Pehongal Fort. Later, she died in the prison. This way, Rani Chennamma remained as an ideal person for her bravery. Sangoli Rayana was a brave soldier and army chief of Kittur who helped Rani Chennamma during the wars against the British. He fought for his motherland Kittur to free from the British. When he was imprisoned by the British along with Rani Chennamma and later when he was released, he organized an army against the British and held secret meetings in different regions. His army moved from place to place and looted the treasury and burnt government offices of the British. Later, he built an army of 500 men and punished the villagers who were helping the British army. He wanted Rani Chennamma's adopted son Shivalingappa to be the ruler of Kittur and continue to fight against the British. Expecting the danger from Sangoli Rayana, the British shifted Chennamma from Bayhongala prison to Kusigal prison. After knowing Sangoli Rayana could not be defeated in an open battle, British with their tricky strategy by using the support of Rani Chennamma's enemies who are Desai's and district revenue collector also called Amaldar named Krishna Raya captured Sangoli Rayana and brought to Dharwad. Later, many of his soldiers also surrendered to the British. Even Shivalingappa, who was supposed to be the ruler of Kittur, was also arrested. Rayana was sentenced to death by hanging unto death from a banyan tree. This way, he died in Belagavi district on 26 January 1831. Even today, Sangoli Rayana is famous and was remembered for his bravery and nationalism. Sulia is the taluk in Dakshina Kannada district, Karnataka, and regions including even Sulia. Bellare, Puttur were the main parts of the Amarasulia movement. The rebellion of Amarasulia is the opposition for British rule and a fight for freedom against the British. This Amarasulia movement was started by leaders of the Sulia region which were part of Kurg where this region was later joined to Mangalore by the British. During the British rule, Chikavira Rajendra of the Haleri dynasty of Kurg was removed from the throne and transferred to Vellore and then to Kashi. This caused political damage in Kodagu which made leaders like Swami Aparampura, Kalyana Swami and Puttabasappa angry and started to oppose the British rule declaring that the Haleri dynasty is ruled under them in Kodagu. Swami Aparampara took the leadership of this rebellion, but very soon he was captured in 1834 by the British and moved to Bangalore prison. And later, even Kalyan Swami was captured in 1837 and placed in Mysore prison. Though many leaders, even after giving a huge fight, the rebellion of Amarasulia could not stop the British rule in Karnataka. Seeing this, Puttabasappa, who was a farmer,
took the leadership of this rebellion and convinced the people that if his government comes into power he would free the tax on tobacco and salt which made many rich farmers landowners and village heads to show interest in this rebellion his rebellion further becomes famous when he killed an amaldar who was cruel to people and through this puttabasappa started to gain more support from the people now puttabasappa and his followers marched towards mangalore looted treasury and prison of bantwal regions seeing this the british started protecting their forts and arranged the army from talacheri kannur and bombay regions to fight against his rebellions after hearing british plan puttabasappa with his followers marched towards sulia but very soon british captured them with the help of kodagu people leaders like puttabasappa lakshmappa bangarasa kedambadi ramaya gauda and gudde mane appaya were hung till death Though these farmer leaders failed in their rebellion against the British, their tough fight and efforts for freedom became an unforgettable history. Surapura district was an important place since Mughal rule. It was located 50 kilometers away from the present-day Yadgir, Karnataka. During the rule of Marathas and the Nizam of Hyderabad, Surapura was a vassal state, which means it is a state which is under the control of other rulers like the British. When these kings lost most of these territories, Surapura turned into a small territory. During this time, a ruler called Krishna Nayaka died. and his son venkatappa nayaka who was born in 1834 was educated under philip meadows taylor who was appointed as a british political agent and as a reformist which means who works on solving the issues of surapura venkatappa nayaka since childhood had a good understanding with taylor and was calling him appa but krishna nayaka's brother peddu nayaka did not want the young prince venkatappa to be the ruler which led to a lot of internal issues so the british started to interfere with this issue in 1842 and philip meadows taylor gained the power of authority over surapura to solve these issues taylor started conducting a land survey of the kingdom and his decisions helped in increasing the revenue of surapura and appointed peddanayaka as the diwan which means who takes care of the financial decisions of surapura now venkatappanayaka after becoming the young king in his early 20s in 1853 heavily got irritated by the british rule as surapura was under their control so he sent an agent asking for the support to peshwa nana saheb also called balaji baji rao peshwa who was the king of the maratha empire the british government was observing the various developments of surapura in 1857 it came to the notice of the government that the representatives of nana saheb were present in surapura This made the British suspicious of king's intentions. The British appointed an officer named Campbell to report on the various activities of the king. The officer submitted a report to the resident of Hyderabad that the king is involved in improper administration. Venkatappa Nayaka is usually presented as the leader of 1857 revolution in Karnataka by historians. The British army captured Surapura in 1858. The war continued. There are different stories and less clarity on Venkatappa Nayaka's end. When Kopal was under the control of Nizam of Hyderabad and the British, Nizam started putting heavy land taxes. Due to this 
zamindars including farmers and agricultural laborers suffered heavily this angered one of the brave zamindar called veerappa who rebelled against the british by building his private force he captured fort of koppal and other forts many farmers and zamindars supported veerappa's fight against the british and the nizam after this the british with the support of nizam's army defeated veerappa who had only 500 soldiers veerappa died in the battle after fighting for 5 days finally the koppal fort was captured back by the british though veerappa was a small landowner and a farmer fought in a small area of koppal against the british his bravery is unforgettable and inspired many people holgali is a small village of mudol taluk of belgaum district when the british east india company announced that all indians should hand over the arms that is all kinds of weapons to the british and should use only with a license Bedas of Hulgali village strongly opposed the system of British. Bedas of Hulgali were supported by Bedas of Manturu, Bodhni, Alagandi and other local rulers. British expecting the danger from them entered Hulgali village, captured more than 200 Bedas and hanged 19 leaders of Bedas in December 1857. Though many warriors failed to drive British out of Karnataka their tough fight to get freedom became a history and inspired many people mm-hmm.